Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here. Uh, this lesson is called Using Intercepts. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com and then go to the Integrated Math 1 uh, link. So our question here is how can we identify and use intercepts of a linear relationship? Linear just means a line. So the intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so uh, that's what I just said. The intercepts are where a graph crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. So here you guys this graph is crossing, this is the x-axis right here, the x is kind of hidden right there, but this is the x-axis, so this is the x-intercept right here, okay, and this uh, has the coordinates 1, 2, 3, comma, 0, okay, here's the y-axis right here, so this is the y-intercept right here, so the coordinates of this are 0, comma, negative 2, okay, so those are our x and y-intercepts, so the y-intercept of a graph is the y coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the y axis okay and the x coordinate of that point is uh, where is always zero okay and then uh, the x intercept is where it crosses the x axis and it's your x coordinate and um, and your y value is always zero there so check this out right here so here the x intercept right here has uh, three zero is the the ordered pair so the x intercept is x equals three here the y intercept is y equals negative two and it has the ordered pair zero comma negative two okay so if it says y intercept the x is zero if it says x intercept the y is zero okay so let's do some of that so let's find the x and y intercept so we have this equation right here three x minus two y equals six so to find your x intercept you just replace a y for zero so i'm going to plug a zero right in there and to find the y intercept then x is going to be zero so let's go ahead and do that right there so that's what that is so there there we go and we just you know this this goes away now so three x this is zero right here so now we have three x equals six over here this goes away so we have negative two y equals six so then when we solve we get x equals um, two and y equals negative three so our x intercept is is two and our y intercept is at negative three okay and if they wanted to know the ordered pairs this would be two comma zero and this would be zero comma negative three okay so uh... that's how you do that let's do that with this one so the the x intercepts are when we replace uh, y with zero and the, and the y-intercept is when we replace x with 0. So we'll put a 0 here and here, similarly right there. And then we just solve. Okay, so uh, divide, and then we get uh, the x-intercept is negative 12. The y-intercept is 10. Piece of cake, huh? All right, so if the point 5, 0 is on the graph, is 5, 0 the y-intercept of the graph? Okay, well, if it's the y-intercept, then we're going to have a number other than uh, uh, 0 in the y part right there. So this one's the x-intercept because we have 5 in the, in the x position. So it's the x-intercept, all right? So uh, find the, uh, and interpret the x and y-intercepts for each situation, okay? So here we go, the Sandia Peak, I guess that's how you uh, pronounce that, tramway in Albuquerque, New Mexico, travels... Uh, a distance of about 4,500 meters to the top of Sandia Peak. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, you guys. Its speed is 300 meters per minute. The function f of x is equal to 4,500 minus 300x gives the trans distance in meters from the top of the peak after x minutes. So imagine it starts way up there at the peak and it starts going down, and it's going down at 300 meters a minute. So, so this is like the elevation right here. It starts at this height, and then every minute it goes down by 300 right there. So the x-intercept uh, is when y, or f of x in this case, remember f of x equals y, when uh, this equals 0. So we just put in 0 right there, and we solve for um, uh, x right here. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is add 300 x to both sides right here we get 300 x equals 4500 then divide by 300 we get uh, 15 okay x equals 15 well what does that mean well that just means remember x is the number of minutes it takes to get down to zero so finally it takes 15 minutes uh, from the peak to go down to zero or from the you know go from zero all the way up to the peak right there and the y-intercept is uh, at, when x equals zero 
So when x equals 0, then this goes away, this 300x right here. So we're just left with or this 300x right here. So y equals 4,500. Okay, y equals, y equals f of x, so it equals 4,500. So the distance from the peak when it starts at 0 minutes before it moves anywhere is 4,500 feet, 4,500 feet. Actually, it should be meters. I'm sorry. This is meters, you guys. This should be meters. I'm sorry. My bad. It should be meters. Anyway, so here's a graph right here, you guys. So here's the time in minutes right here. So it starts at zero. Looks like these are going by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So every minute it drops uh, 300 feet. So here it is at 4,500 feet. So after one minute would be right about here. It would drop to 300 feet. So it would be down here at like 4,200 feet right here. Okay, another three minutes. So that would take me to two minutes right here. This is my my two minute mark right here. So it would be right there and that would be another 300 from uh, 42 which would be what's that 3900 right there and so on. So after 15 minutes it goes down and reaches the bottom of the wherever that tram goes right there. Here's another one just like that. A hot air balloon is 750 meters above the ground and begins to descend at a constant rate of 25 meters per minute. The function uh, f of x equals 750x minus 25, I'm 750, sorry, minus 25x represents the height of the hot air balloon after x minutes. Can you see this being a real similar problem right here? So we just let y equal 0 to find the x-intercept. So so we let y equal 0. Well, that's this, f of x. So 0 equals this. That's what this says here. And then let x equal 0 to find the y-intercept. So then 0 goes in right here. Okay, when we solve, I'll uh, put 25x over here on this side right here. And over here, this is just 0, so y equals 750 right there. All right, so when we divide by 25, we get 30. So that just means it takes 30 minutes for that balloon to finally reach the, the, the ground right there. Okay? And then over here, it just means that the height above the ground, it starts out at 750 meters when it starts at zero minutes uh, before it starts uh, its descent. And again, here's the graph right here. So it looks like uh, the time down here is going by 5. So here's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And it bottoms out right there. There's the x-intercept right here. And the y-intercept is right here. And in geometry, um, uh, we have a, a postulate to that says any two points determine the line. So you just got to get your intercepts and then connect them with a straight line because this is a linear situation right here because it goes down at a constant rate. Remember that has to go constant right there. So here it is at 0, uh, 750, and here it is at 30, comma 0. So after 30 minutes, it reaches the bottom. And before it starts descending, so after 0 minutes, it's up there at 750. So right over here is the height. Looks like these tick marks are going by 100s right there, OK? Just help us understand graphs. So a classmate says that the graph shows the path of the tram. OK, that graph showing the path of the tram. Well, do we agree? Well, here's that graph right here. Is this the path of the tram? No, it's not the path of the tram. It just talks about uh, the height of the tram after x minutes. Remember, this is our minutes right here. And this is the height in the air of the tram right here. So it's not the path of the tram. It just says uh, it represents the distance between the tram and the peak over a time right there. Okay. All right, or the tram in the ground also, that's the distance from there. So use the intercepts to graph the line described by each situation. Okay, so here we have some fractions right here. 1 half y equals 3 minus 3 fourths x. My students don't like fractions, so, so let's first put it in standard form. So we put, it, uh, put this 3 fourths x, add it over here to this side, so we get this right here. And then your book doesn't do this, but I say let's get rid of the fractions. Multiply by a common denominator. Here's 4, here's 2, this is 1 right here, so the common denominator is 4. So just multiply both sides by the common denominator, 4. And that gets rid of all the fractions. So here these are going to cancel. We're left with 3x. 2 goes into 4 twice, so we're left with 2y, and that's going to give us 12 right there. Okay, no more problem now. Now we can find the intercepts, okay? So the x-intercept is when y is 0. And the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So this is 0. 3 goes into 12 4 times. This is 0. 2 goes into 12 6 times. So the x-intercept is uh, 4. Here's the x-intercept at 4, 0. These are going by 2s, uh, 2, 4. Here's the x-intercept. The y-intercept's up there at 6 right there, okay? Any two points determines the line, so there it is right there. 
All right, and typically we always write the equation, the original equation that they gave us somewhere next to the graph of the line right there. Okay, we'll be graphing so many that uh, your teacher will probably want you to write the equation next to your line that you graph. Okay, here's another one. Put it in standard form. Okay, so add, uh, subtract 12x from both sides. There it is. Okay, to get the x-intercepts, we let y be 0. And to get the y-intercepts, we let x be 0. Okay, and then we go bing, bang, boom, and we solve. We get x equals negative 9. So, so negative 9, 0 is right there. And the y-intercept is right there at 0, 6. And then we just connect those points up right there. And there's our line right there. Oops, and I forgot to write the equation here. By golly, I should have wrote this equation right there. Well, I don't have time to do that right now. All right, uh, let's answer this. So a line intersects the y-axis at uh, point A, B. Is it B that's 0 or is it A that's 0? Well, if it intersects the y-axis, then we want this, this y value to be a number. We want this one to be 0 right here. So typically A is 0. Now B could be 0 if it does go through the origin. That's what that says. But typically your A is 0 if it's the y-intercept. Uh, uh, Okay, where it goes through the y-axis, that's our y-intercept. Okay, what does a negative y-intercept uh, mean for a real-world application? Well, it just means that the situation represented by the line begins with some negative value, whatever the uh, position is right there. Let's slide that guy up. So how can we find the x-intercept of a graph of a linear equation using the equation? And then... How is using the graph of the linear equation to find the intercepts like uh, uh, using the equation? Well, I said something like this. Uh, to use the graph, we identify the point where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the x-coordinate of that is going to be our x-intercept. Okay, And to use the equation, uh, we substitute in uh, 0 for y and then solve for x. So in both cases, we find the, the value of x uh, when y is 0 right there, and that will give us our x-intercept. Okay, hope that made sense. If you're in my class, I would probably assign that as your homework. And if you can, uh, would you guys click like and take care of you guys.